Hi, I'm Claude from Wilderness Skills. Welcome to my channel. This time I'm going to talk about the Engel First Aid Kit or AFAC from Riker Nylon Gear. Do you know the feeling when you put on a really nice jacket or a pair of comfortable boots or stand with a really really nice and well made knife in your hand and just think, wow, this is great, this is just for me. Well, that was a feeling that I had when I had the AFAG in my hand the first time. I just thought, man, how cool is this? Really well thought of and simple. And why didn't I get the idea? And let me just to show you how it looks uh, when it's on my leg here. Really nice and comfortable. The uh, AFAC is made out of uh, 500 denier Kudura nylon and it, it consists of two parts, the AFAC itself and a small extension piece. But uh, let's uh, start out here with the uh, main part. The uh, length is 40 centimeters and the width is 11 point five centimeters. Starting over here, uh, we have a large piece of uh, Velcro. Uh, the uh, width is eight centimeters and the height is 10 centimeters. Then we have a large pocket where the width is 9.5 centimeters and the depth is 11 centimeters. And we have a large piece of Velcro estate here, eight times 10 centimeters. Then we have a piece of uh, webbing 2.4 centimeters in width and 13 centimeters in length and a piece of velcro here which is uh, 5 centimeters and that goes for the two other straps here. Then we have a uh, smaller pocket with a width of uh, 2.7 centimeters and a height of 11 centimeters. We have a thin piece of uh, velcro here 2.4 centimeters and 10 centimeters in height. Then the third pocket here, again a large pocket, 9.5 centimeters in width and 11 centimeters in height. And we have a thin piece of uh, Velcro here, which is uh, 2.4 centimeters and 10 centimeters in height. And the piece of uh, webbing here to close it down. And then we have the last piece here. Uh, which is the piece which uh, closes the AFAC. Looking at the other side, we have a long horizontal pocket here. The size of that one is 23.5 centimeters in uh, length and 10.5 centimeters in height. Then we have a small uh, Velcro estate here, 5 centimeters in width and 10 centimeters in height. And then we have uh, three uh, small pieces of uh, cloth here. First one here, made in America. Then the Rika nylon gear. And the uh, part number here on the last one. Then we have the uh, extension piece. The size of that one is 10 times 10 centimeters. And it is made out of a uh, stretchable uh, piece of uh, nylon, uh, elastic band, really, really heavy duty. And it can be stretched about three centimeters, so the width will be 13 centimeters and the height still 10 centimeters. It is backed by a piece of Velcro on each side, four centimeters in width and 10 centimeters in height. So just to make a quick recap on the AFAC, you have three vertical pockets, one large, one small and one large again. Then on the back side, you have a really long horizontal one. You can get the IFAC in three different colors. Ranger green as this one, black and coyote. The weight empty is 78 grams. And depending on uh, what kind of equipment that you put in to your IFAC, 
of course the weight will differ from that. You can use the AFAC all year round, spring, summer, autumn and winter. And no matter if you are a civilian, in the military, police, law enforcement type, um, paramedic, then you can use the AFAC. It doesn't necessarily need to be in this configuration. You can choose and decide what kind of configuration that you want to use it in. The uh, next part of uh, my review will be a little different than what I normally do. Because uh, when I was in Arizona, I actually met with uh, Mike from uh, Rikan Island Gear. And Mike is the guy behind the AFAC. So uh, let's uh, see that uh, interview. Okay guys, uh, so I'm here uh, with uh, Mike from uh, Rikan Island Gear. Nice seeing you again, man. Yeah, it's good seeing you, Klaus. Um, you're the man behind the AFAC. Yep. Um, could you tell me something about it? What's the idea and uh, how did you come up with it? Yeah, so, uh, so I've, I attend a number of shooting classes uh, in the U.S. And my good friend Chris, he does some uh, undercover work and he doesn't always uh, have the ability to carry medical gear. Okay. Well, we were out shooting drills and we decided to do some drills incorporating uh, the tourniquet. Yeah. And we had to walk like 50 yards back to our bags to get our tourniquets. Okay. And uh, that's not really uh, an acceptable uh, solution. No. It, um, if you get injured, you may not be able to make it 50 yards. Or if somebody else is injured and you gotta run 50 yards and run back, they lost all that time. You just yeah. can't put the blood back no. in. So uh, I went home, uh, got with some people smarter than me on what to carry in it, what they wanted in it, and designed the AFAC around what they had recommended. Okay. Uh, also, I, I got a background in uh, riding motorcycles and backpacking. So that, that was incorporated too. For like 10 years, all I had was a motorcycle. No. I didn't have saddlebags or anything okay. like that. So I just, I had to carry everything on me. So for how, how long time have you been working on this? Uh, to, to be honest, the main design of the AFAC, I made that night. Like there's only one or two small changes that uh, I've made. Uh, the, the whole process of everything, it's probably been about a year and a half to two years. Okay that uh, we've been manufacturing yeah, the AFAC. Yeah. When it first started out, um, I had no dreams or aspirations of a business. It was just um, me and I'd have my mom come over and we'd be sewing into the night on our downtimes and shipping these over to guys who had high risk jobs overseas, okay. kind of like as a thank you yeah. to friends and uh, acquaintances that yeah. had high risk jobs. It was, it's a, a thing of a, it's a passion for me. Yeah. So pay cool. back yeah we do a lot of donations okay. so we, we try and get them in the hands of trainers yeah. that, that can show people how to what they would use them for and uh, stuff like that and then there's a lot of law enforcement that that doesn't make that much money okay. so uh, and their units are more interested in spending money on other training other than medical or firearms yeah. Yeah. and these guys will go out and seek training on their own but they can't really afford a lot of the gear so uh, I try and donate at least once a month to uh, to law enforcement. Oh, that's so it's great. A, it's not a nonprofit, but uh, but we give we give a lot back. Like okay. we're sponsoring a, a shooting competition this week yeah. that uh, benefits the Phoenix Children's Hospital. So okay, wow, that's great. We, we try and do a lot for that. Yeah. I have a full time job, so this isn't a hobby for me. I take it extremely serious. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not living off the money. No. Cool. Could you show me uh, your setup? Yeah, sure. So this is this is my AFAC. So I actually was the very first customer. So I bought my own and I donated mine. Okay. All right, so this is my AFAC. So this one's uh, about a year and a half old. This is one of the very first uh, ones I had manufactured that I didn't make myself. So these were made in Phoenix originally. Um, I work full time, so I wasn't able to make them myself, but they're made exactly to my specs and yeah. uh, they're made really, really good. Okay. So mine's geared towards medical. They, they can be used for anything that your heart desires that you can fit in it. Yeah. So uh, that's the big thing I try to tell people not to, you know, box yourself into what I'm carrying. Yeah. So I, I have a soft T wide in mine. I really like this tourniquet. Yeah. Um, all tourniquets like fit a certain purpose so um you know 
the the cat is awesome if you have room for the the plastic wings yeah awesome tourniquet but it requires more space yeah so that's why i went with this i carry a, a pair of gloves and i usually carry an extra set my gloves actually uh one side's orange and one side's black okay. i wish i wish they didn't have I wish this was more of a blue because yeah. black you can't see blood on. No, exactly. But I like having the orange, so I just go with them. Okay. Um, they have a gimmick where they say it's easier to see cuts in the gloves, but I've tried it and it's kind of easier. But once you get a hole that that large, you'd see it anyway. Yeah. So uh, um, I have a small pair of shears in here. These are like um, they call them mini trauma shears. Yeah. Uh, I've I use these shears like they tell you not to. I use these shears for everything whenever I need scissors and they still cut like crazy. Yeah. So they've been really, really good. Um, when people buy from me, I like these shears so much, I usually ship them out with the shears yeah. uh, included as long as I have the shears in stock. And then you go into this pouch. I have this pouch pretty well loaded. What I have in here is I have a quick clot. So this is a really good product. Um, I also like Cellox. Cellox is a little harder to get in the U.S. sometimes okay. because it's imported. Um, and then I have a chest decompression needle. Uh, and I have the H&H &H mini uh, compression bandage. This bandage is really, really cool. Yeah. So it's uh, an ace bandage that you can press into use as a tourniquet. Um, if you know how to do that, you just pull it until you can see through the ace bandage and then wrap it around. Uh, it also has clips to lock it in that are really easy to use, and, and it's got a uh, absorbent pad, okay. four by seven inches. Yeah, it's th there's just a number of things you can do with this. Yeah, yeah, it's a matter of thinking out of the box yeah. uh, with the with the things that you have. Yeah, and then in the back, this is what really kind of makes the AFAC different than a lot of other products. Yeah, is uh, we can fit a full size chest seal. So mine's a little a little ragged, so I apologize, but. This is after a year and a half and I totally, I know guys have folded these in quarters, put a bunch of weight on them, let them sit for a long time. Yeah. They test them out here in the Phoenix Sun and they still hold. Oh, so cool. they're, they're designed to be folded. Yeah. Um, so I have a halo chest seal. I put some extra Gorilla Tape on here in case I had to press the packaging and into, into use as an improvised chest seal. Oh, that's a neat idea. And then um, I also, there's so much you can do with uh, tape, and it's hard to recreate out in the, out in the, yeah. the wild. Yeah. I made my own little casualty card that I put on there uh, just in case I, I need it if there's, like, multiple people. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I carry in uh, in my AFAC. Cool. Um, do you have any other uh, uses for the for the AFAC, the pouch, or any other places to, to mount it? Yeah, so... Um, Medical gear is really expensive. So, so this right, this right here costs as much as the AFAC, uh, this combat quick gauze. Yeah. So, especially with police officers, um, my even myself, people on you know budgets, where uh, the government isn't paying for your equipment, you, you need to be able to use it for everywhere. Yeah. And so the nice thing about the AFAC is, let's say you're going to the range, what you can do is you can uh, roll it up roll it up like a bun and then it'll just it'll just sit like this and it'll be ready uh to be used you can yeah. stuff it in a bag yeah. and just use it as a medical organizer or another nice thing that you can do is like i have my bag back there i can wrap it around my handle of my bag yeah if i want and have it out in the open and just have yeah. it sitting out cool so. yeah and, and even, even if you call it an afac it doesn't necessarily mean that, that it is just for first aid. You know, you can, again, think out of the box, um, use it for serious stuff, survival kits. Um, and I think it's a, it's a really neat uh, package that you made here, um, both with the uh, with all the medical stuff, but also like just empty. So anyone can use it for whatever use they want. Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent observation. And a lot of guys overseas are using it for that. Um, I don't know exactly what they're carrying in it, but uh, some of the things I've heard is credentials, um, escape and evasion stuff, yeah. lock picks, okay. uh, keys. Uh, they carry um, signaling panels uh, and, and stuff like that. So 
signal mirrors. Yeah. I've seen the, the only thing that limits you is the size of it and uh, your imagination. Yeah. I, I'd encourage people to use it for things yeah. other than uh, medical. I think it would be a really good idea if uh, some of you who are using the AFAC, uh, not only for medical things, but also for other stuff, shoot uh, Mike an email uh, and some pictures so uh, we can see uh, how you're using it. You know, everybody can just get more ideas uh, out of seeing other people using uh, yeah. your, your equipment. Yeah, and we love that. Uh, when people send us uh, pictures or post pictures on Instagram, typically we'll contact them and send them a patch oh, cool. as a thank you, yeah. you know, to, yeah. to, to spread the word. Yeah. That's cool. Wow, Mike, that's a really nice piece of gear. Um, I'm really amazed uh, all the things that you can cram into this. Uh, yeah. And I will definitely try this out for a long time. Uh, and I'll be back with a really long review on, uh, on the AFAC here. Um, so, um, Mike, thank you very much uh, for coming yeah. here and uh, presenting your, uh, your AFAC. Yeah. It's really cool and uh, thank you for your support, man. Yeah, thanks, Klaus. And, and Keep me up to date and give me feedback because you have a ton of experience. Yeah, and I'll I'd, do that. I'd greatly appreciate the feedback. Cool. Thanks. As you can see, Mike is a great guy and he really likes to talk about the AFAC and the, all the different configurations that he can use. As he says, it doesn't necessarily need to be just for a first aid kit. You can also use it as an ID kit. You use it for money. You can use it for whatever you want, survival kit and everything. And I will, uh, in the coming period, I'll try to do a uh, survival kit uh, using the AFAC. Uh, and I hope you will see that video when, uh, when I post that. If I'm going to share my own experiences with the AFAC, well, I've been carrying it almost daily for a full month now. And I can't walk anywhere without it now. Uh, especially uh, if I'm having a long pants on. If I'm wearing shorts, it's another story. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm walking in the town, I might not carry it on my ankle. Uh, because people will start looking funny at me, but I'll just uh, roll it up and then put it in my backpack. But if I'm out in the nature, I'll definitely wear it uh, because uh, it's on my person and then no matter what's happened, I can always get a reach of it. And um, if you're using it uh, on another person, you can just take it off, put it on your arm. And then you actually have uh, easy access to uh, all the uh, uh, tools that are inside the AFAC. I also like that uh, it's really easy to access the different stuff. You just need to pull up your pant leg and then uh, you can get access to all the equipment which are inside the, uh, the AFAC. Except the chest shield of course, and then you have to take the AFAC off um, to pull that out. My setup is identical to the one that uh, Mike just showed you. I just put a couple of extra things in it. I put uh, some uh, oral rehydration salts in it. So uh, if you get uh, dehydrated or hyponatremia, um, I have something to help you with that one. And there is uh, plenty of room to, to have that in uh, the first pocket here. Then I have a uh, small plastic bag here with uh, a lot of uh, band-aids uh, and a small uh, pair of uh, tweezers. And lastly, I added a really small uh, flashlight. Like this one here and there is room enough uh, to, to put that in of course you have to think about uh, what kind of uh, tools that you uh, you put into the AFAC uh, because uh, it, it, it's not a good a good idea if it gets too heavy because then you might not carry it every day uh, it should be like a um, EDC everyday carry so you really need really need to, to think about what you what you put into it um, and I'm not sure that I'll I'll expand it this uh, further because um, I think it has the, the right uh, kind of tools uh, in it. And then a uh, small reminder, um, no matter how good your tools are, if your knowledge is bad, the tools are worthless. So uh, please check that you know how to use the different tools that you have in your AFAC. Um, get some uh, good training, quality training and practice a lot uh, because uh, without the proper training, this one is worthless. It's just like a rock. So if you buy this stuck with the different types of tools, please get some quality training and train with the tools afterwards. If you buy it empty and want to put in your own stuff, please make sure that you know how to use the different types of tools that you have in it. Either if it's first aid tools or if it's survival tools, make sure that you know how to use them. If I'm going to talk about the pros and cons uh, with the AFAC from uh, Raikan Alangir, 
let me start with the cons and there isn't that many of them. What I observed was uh, when I was wearing high boots uh, and I had to place the AFAC higher up on my leg instead of down at the ankle, because my calf will get bigger the further I go up, um, the uh, Velcro here would be a little bit askew. Uh, it wasn't a problem when I used the uh, extender, but if I didn't use it, it would be like a little bit askew. Um, so what I would suggest to, uh, to Mike uh, is to expand this area here so uh, there is a little bit more Velcro uh, estate uh, grabbing each other. I didn't have any problems with the uh, AFAC going apart anything, but um, it's a small detail that um, me personally, uh, I would like to have corrected. So uh, it is a little bit longer here on the Velcro part here. Then the second one, uh, again, learning by fooling around. Um, I was walking uh, for an extended period in a really, really hot environment with uh, normal hiking uh, shoes and uh, really short socks. So uh, my ankle uh, and uh, the lower part of uh, my, uh, my leg was exposed. Then I put this one on uh, and walked with this for a couple of days. Then I actually got a small uh, wound uh, on the lower part of my leg uh, because of the Kudura here gnawing on my leg. Of course, it was an error from uh, my side. You should uh, wear uh, a little bit higher socks so you could uh, prevent the, uh, the Kudura here. Uh, having direct contact, especially down here on the bottom, um, having direct contact uh, on your skin. It doesn't matter here on, on the flat surface, but just down here on the bottom, um, it can uh, make a small wound um, on your leg if you're not uh, careful. If I'm going to talk about the pros, well, sometimes uh, you put on a really nice jacket, as I told you in the beginning, or a, a nice pair of hiking boots, or you have this uh, nice knife in your hand, and you think, wow, this is just great, this is perfect. Um, that was the same thing that I thought about this. Um, as soon as I had it in my hand, I was just looking and said, man, why didn't I think of that? And after wearing it uh, a day or two, I couldn't even feel that I was wearing it. Um, it was so comfortable. The AFAC is uh, so simple, but still really well thought of. Um, it's, it just boggles my mind that nobody thought about this before uh, in this configuration here. Uh, it is really easy to get a hold of everything, uh, of course, except the chest shield because it is on the inside, but the rest is really easy to, to get a hold of. Um, it is so simple and it is lightweight. Um, as long as you don't uh, put uh, really heavy stuff inside, uh, you won't feel it after a day. Um, so I'm walking with this every day. Uh, so for me, it is an EDC. I also really like the versatility of the AFAC. It doesn't necessarily need to be a first aid kit. You can get an extra AFAC and kit it out with whatever you want. And as I said, uh, I would uh, make a survival kit uh, that you can see in uh, one of my coming videos. So um, a lot of good things about this, uh, this AFAC here. Really, really simple, uh, but really well thought of. If I'm going to give the AFAC a grading on a scale from 0 to 10, where 10 is the best on price, well, you can buy it directly from uh, Mike on uh, Rikon Nylon Gear for $55. And I can also find it on a lot of other websites for the same price. Um, you can also buy it stocked on some of the other websites. Uh, the price will be around $120, depending on uh, what kind of uh, tools that they put in it. And I think that's a really fair price, so that is a solid 9. Looking at the quality, again, it's a solid 9. It's quality materials. The stitching is really well made, uh, triple stitching where it's needed, uh, cross stitching here on the uh, Velcro, um, so a solid 9. Looking at the usability, it's a clear 10. Um, as I said, sometimes you just have something in your hands where you think, wow, this is great, and why didn't I think of it? Um, it is so versatile, you can uh, not only use it as the first aid kit, uh, but for a lot of other uses. Um, and after you've been wearing this for a day or two, um, you won't feel that you're wearing it. So it will truly be a EDC everyday carry item. Really, really nice. It is well thought of, uh, really simple, uh, but really well thought of. And that's what I like about this uh, system here. Simple, but well thought of. So that's all that I had to tell you about the AFAC, the ankle first aid kit from Rikon Nylon Gear. 
I hope you uh, subscribe to my channel and see my coming videos, especially the one uh, where I make a uh, survival kit uh, for the AFAC. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.